Hi, this is Jen Lasser with Adobe Analytics Product Management. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your marketing attribution a step further with marketing channels reporting and cross-tab analysis in Analysis Workspace. Now, for the demo, I'm going to assume you have our marketing channels report enabled, um, but if you don't, you can read more about why it is our most effective external traffic report at the link in the description of the video below. The help documentation link will outline the process for quickly enabling the reports. Um, it's something that can be done within minutes. You just need to put in a little bit of forethought and preparation uh, about your tracking strategy and your tracking code structure. Okay, back to our demo. So the marketing channels report once set up will automatically create a first and last touch channel view for you. While most of the time we defer to a last touch view, there is some helpful information that can be gleaned from the first touch report as well. Um, a few questions that come to mind for me are, you know, which channels are assisting in driving conversions? How often are my customers interacting with multiple marketing touch points? Or how often is a channel that found a customer the same one to convert that customer in the end? So while we can't do full-blown um, attribution modeling just yet in Analysis Workspace, we can use what we know about first and last touch channels of our, vis of our visitors to kind of take our analysis a step further past this last touch view. So I'm in Workspace here and I've pulled together a first touch channel report and a last touch channel report. Now the first touch channel report is telling us what channels found our customers. What are those original channels that, that brought those customers to our website? The last touch report is telling us what channels were, were most close to when the, the customer converted. What are those last touch points that they interacted with before they converted um, on our property? So while both of these views are certainly extremely helpful, um, it doesn't help us in seeing the overlap between our first touch and last touch marketing touch points. We really need to bring together both of these dimensions to, to get that kind of uh, information on, on the relationship between first and last. So this is where cross-tab analysis comes in handy. Cross-tab analysis is the ability to bring in dimensions both as rows and columns of a report. So I'm going to start by bringing in the last touch channel like we had in the original table. And I'm also going to bring in my key success metric of orders. Now I'm going to use orders because um, success metrics are only credited to the last channel that um, was present for that customer before they converted. If we used a metric like visitors or visits, um, it, it could happen where a visitor would be credited to many last touch channels because they could have come in through email and then returned to the website a couple days later through paid search. So to get a very clean view on your attribution, you want to stick to your main success metric. So the next thing we need to do is pull in our first touch channel and add our, our cross dimension here. So I'm going to pull over the variable and drop it right under orders. And by default, it'll bring in just the top five channels. But you can see very quickly that I've sliced my order data by new dimensions. Um, this is the, the beauty of cross-tab analysis. Rather than having to create segments for each one of these first touch channels, I was simply able to drag over a dimension and slice my data by it. So a huge time saver. Um, since the, only the top five channels are brought over, what I need to do now is open up first touch channel and bring over the other two channels that are missing here. So social networks and SEO will round out my first touch channel report. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is make sure my columns are in the same order as my rows. And it looks like I'm pretty close here. I just need to move social networks ahead of paid search. Okay, great. So the last thing that I, I like to do is actually simplify the table a little bit. Um, I like to just look at the percentages as a starting point. So to do that, you can change your column at the top here and turn off the number. That will just leave the percentages in the column, which gives you a much clearer view here. So you can go column by column and turn off the numbers. Um, I went ahead and actually did this ahead of the demo just to save us a little bit of time. So you can see here, we now have the same table as before, first touch channels, last touch channels, and the percentage of orders for each. 
So this resulting view is quite a powerful one. So let's break it down a little bit here. Along the diagonal, we're able to see the percentage of orders that were credited to the same first and last touch channel. For example, for email, 72% of orders that were credited to email as a finder channel were also credited to email as a closer channel. Higher percentages along the diagonal um, can possibly indicate a lower overlap in your marketing efforts, meaning that if, if a channel finds an order, um, it's likely to also close that order. Your, your marketing touch points aren't interacting with one another very much. Lower percentages along that diagonal can indicate that you have channels that are assisting quite a bit in driving conversions for other closer channels. The next thing you can do is focus on individual columns. Columns will sum to 100%. So this percentage is of the total orders that email um, was a finder for, um, what, you know, what percentage of those orders were ultimately credited to each of these last touch channels. So you can see here, of all the customers that email found, 72% of, of their orders were ultimately credited to email in the end, indicating a, a lower likelihood of assisting channels in between. The remaining 28% of orders were ultimately stolen away by other marketing touch points and credited elsewhere um, in the end in a last touch model. And this indicates that email assisted in driving those orders at some point. Um, so in this example here, you can see that referring domains benefited the much the, the most from an email um, assist here. So of all of the uh, original customers email found, referring domains stole away about 10% of the orders that they um, ultimately did on the website. Okay. So I prefer to look at the percentages because I really just want to understand the relationship between first and last touch. Um, but it is also helpful to look at the numbers as well, and you always want to ground um, the, the information you're looking at in terms of volume of data as well. So I, I created the exact same table. I just toggled the um, percentages off and the numbers on. I also added in a all visits segment here just so I could get the total count of orders attributed to each, each last touch channel. Um, in this table, you can also see the total number of orders along the top credited to each first touch channel. So that's kind of helpful to see as well. So for our email example, there was 8,857 orders that email um, you know, found customers for, and ultimately email got credit in the end for about 9,300 orders. So pretty interesting to see. Um, you can highlight each row at a time here to understand uh, you know, of all the last touch orders, how many were assisted, how many were unassisted. So for email, 9,300 last touch orders. Of those, 6,300 were likely unassisted because the, the first touch channel was also email. Uh, the remaining 3,000 orders did have an assist though from at least one other channel um, because you can see you know, referring domains originally found this thousand orders that ultimately went to email. So, um, you know, while this approach doesn't give you a full multi-touch view, it is a great way to start diving into your marketing attribution past the traditional level of last touch only. And, you know, once you have the marketing channels report set up, you, you can get to this data immediately. Um, it's automatically created for you by way of capturing first and last touch. So we at Adobe are continuing to improve the attribution capabilities that we're offering with an analysis workspace. Um, but in the meantime, know that as an Adobe Analytics customer, you do have options like this to dive further into your marketing analysis than you might have originally thought you had. Um, so I hope you found this video on bringing together marketing channels with cross-tab analysis um, helpful. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time.